Hi, in today's lesson, we're going to learn about functions. So first off, what is a function? A function is defined as being a relationship that assigns to each input exactly one output. The relationship can be expressed as an equation, table, graph, or just a regular situation. Uh, so let's come over here where we see the word input. I want you to write X and where you see the word output. I want you to put a Y right there. So the input is your X values. The output would be your Y values. All right, in the next diagram uh, or this little table, we see examples of functions and non-functions. So let's look right here. These are considered or called mapping diagrams. So this one is a function. These are the inputs, the 8, 9, and 10. And each one of those numbers goes to a single output. Okay? On the right side, we have a mapping diagram that is not a function. The negative 8 goes to a single output. The negative 1 goes to a single output. The 0 goes to a single output. But the 15 has two different outputs. So when I normally teach this lesson, I talk about cheating, for example. So these are the X's and these are the Y's. The X's are not allowed to cheat, okay? As long as the X's aren't cheating, it's a function. In this case, this 15 is cheating. Therefore, this disqualified it from being a function, okay? So if you've got a mapping diagram, you can think about, are any of the X's cheating, right? Uh, in the next set of examples, we have graphs. So over here on the left, this is a function, and the one on the right is not a function. So when you've got a graph, you could take the ordered pairs and change them to a mapping diagram like we saw in the previous example. But another trick is something called the vertical line test. So I want you to write that down, vertical line test test. So a vertical line is a line that goes up and down. So if you imagine passing a vertical line across the graph, so uh, like hold your pencil and move it across the graph, if you ever touch more than one point on the line or the graph at the same time, then we say it failed the vertical line test and it wouldn't be a function. Uh, in this case, if I draw a vertical line through each of these points, Am I ever touching more than one point at the same time? I'm not. So that one passed the vertical line test, right? So I'm going to say passed the vertical line test, and therefore that's why that one is a function. The one on the right would not pass the vertical line test. For example, if I drew my vertical line right here, I'm touching more than one point at the same time. Therefore, this one fails the vertical line test and is not a function. Make sure you're writing this information down. Okay? If it fails it in any one spot, automatically not a function. Okay? And then we have a table here, or two examples of tables. The tables you can think of as mapping diagrams. All right? So basically, if I look at the X's, do any of the X's repeat? No. So since none of the X's repeat, there's no cheating. So I'm going to write no repeats. So no cheating. Don't worry if any of the Y's repeat. Okay? It's okay if the Y's repeat. It's okay if Y cheats. It's only not a function if X is cheating. Okay? So the table on the right, we can see we have some repeats here. For example, I have two threes. I also have a repeat in the fours. So the three, the threes are cheating, and so are the fours. Okay? So therefore, this one is not a function. So the threes are cheating. 
And if, and it doesn't matter. As long as one number is cheating, it's not a function. Okay, one number on the x side, that is. So the threes are cheating, uh, and the fours are also cheating. So it's not a function. Okay. All right, and then at the bottom we have some fill in the blank. So in a function, each input, which is your x value, has exactly one output, which is your y value. On the flip side, more than one output can have the same input. In other words, this is just another way of me talking about that cheating. So the x's, not allowed to cheat. They can only go with one single y value. The y's, however, can cheat, and it doesn't. That doesn't make it a function or not a function. It doesn't. That doesn't ma make a difference. Okay, let's go to the next page. So first, we have exercise one. Uh, it says determine if each table below is a function and justify your answer. So these next three, they're all tables. So when we're looking at the tables, if we want to know if they are they are a function, just look at your inputs or your x values. So I'm going to look right here. And I'm going to look and see, is there any cheating? Okay, so I see the 5 is cheating because it goes with two different outputs, right? It goes with a 19 and a 20. So therefore, this is not a function. Uh, you could say the 5s are cheating, okay? I want you to pause this video and I want you to do B and C. Just answer those two and then come back and we'll talk. Okay, so now you tried B and C and hopefully you got these correct. Let's look at exercise two. And in exercise two, we have some graphs. And same set of directions, determine if each graph below is a function, justify your answer. So when you're looking at the graphs, I recommend doing that vertical line test. Okay, so if I look at part A, uh, it's just a set of points. So imagine uh, I'm going to pass my vertical line through each point. Did I ever touch more than one point at the same time? No. Therefore, this is a function. So I'm going to write function. And then why is it a function? We'd say it passes the vertical line test. Passes the vertical line test. Okay, now I want you to try B, C, and D. So pause the video and complete those problems. Then come back and we'll check. All right, so here are the solutions, the answers for part B. Make sure uh, that you are given the reason why each of these is a function or not a function. So there's B, and here is C and D. Uh, you might need to pause the video in order to make sure you get this information down. All right, let's check exercise three, or complete it, I should say. So this time it says determine if each situation below is a function and justify your answer. So first we have the cost of gas versus the amount of gas being pumped. So we've got two quantities, the cost of gas and the amount of gas that is being pumped. So the gas is your, the cost is our input in this case, and the amount of gas being pumped is going to be the output based on the way it is um, listed. Okay, so if the cost of gas, does each cost of gas have a unique amount, a different amount of gas pumped? I'd say yes, so therefore this would be a function. So I'm going to write the word function, and we're going to say each cost, or let's say dollar amount, each dollar amount of gas has a unique amount of gas pumped, okay? Now I want you to try 
the next three situations. Uh, the first variable, think of that as your input, okay? And then the second variable, think of as your output. All right, so pause the video and try those problems. Okay, so now that you've had an opportunity to complete problems B, C, and D, you're going to want to pause the video and make sure that you have the correct answers. Uh, the justification that I have given for B, C, and D may not be identical to the justification that you have been that you gave, but it should be similar. Uh, if you have questions about these problems or any of the other problems on this uh, worksheet, please be sure to contact your teacher. Uh, once you finish this, turn it in and then work on your independent practice. Good luck.